Hi everyone, uh, so for those who don't know me, my name is Ali Kitaguchi and I create content based on Achievement Hunter and Rooster Teeth. Uh, I make mainly gaming compilations, but I've also done a behind the scenes of one of my gaming compilations as well as like a how-to in the world of editing. Um, and originally in my behind the scenes video that I did for behind the scenes of Achievement Hunter Gavin versus Slow Mo Guys Gavin, what I was going to do was I was going to include questions that people in my community had asked me whether they were about editing or about me or about how I got into Achievement Hunter. But I, uh, that video ended up being uh, two hours long, so I didn't want to pile in questions on top of that because I'm a talker and I can ramble forever, so I didn't. I just decided to split them into two videos. So this video is going to be kind of like a Q&A with my community, basically. Um, these are questions that I've accumulated from my community page, which if you go to my channel, you can hit the community tab, and I post updates in there several times a week. Um, usually they're updates on what the next video is going to be, when it's going to be out, what my progress is on my video, and sometimes I ask for opinions on what I should do for my next video, if I should leave a clip in, what everyone wants to see. My most popular posts are always, what video do you want to see next, which I usually include a poll, which usually has five options in it. And I'll say, hey, these are five options of videos that I'm interested in making. You guys pick, whatever you pick, I'm gonna do. So if you ever want to see specific content from me, you can head over to my community page and say, hey, I've got this idea for a video, or would you ever consider doing this? Or I would love to see this. I'm usually pretty good about responding to comments. There are some that I, like, I mean, I get to maybe 70% of them. <laughs> I not perfect, but I try. Um, so I do read almost all of them though. There are a few that slip through the cracks because I don't get the notification from YouTube Studio um, or I don't see them on a post until it's too late. Like some of my posts have like three or 400 comments and like I usually read them as they come in um, and I'll, I'll like check it periodically throughout the day, but sometimes I do miss them. Um, so if I did miss your comment or I didn't, you didn't get a response that you were hoping for, just post it again and I'll see it eventually. Second time's a charm. Um, anyway, so I have a bunch of questions that I'm gonna go through and uh, hopefully you guys find this semi-interesting. So my first question is from number one taco or taco. I'm gonna assume it's taco, but um, honestly the only two questions that I want to ask are, it says is but should be are, um, what's the story behind your stand-up video collection prior to Achievement Hunter compilations and two, what got you into Achievement Hunter? So I think the First question is asking about the other videos that are on my channel, which are from the Supernatural convention that I went to in uh, Washington DC in 2015. God, was that five years ago? Oh my God. Okay, side note. I was a big fan of Supernatural for a really long time. I still am. I just haven't watched the, so the show recently. I haven't caught up with it. I used to go to DC Con like every year um, and I went like three or four years in a row. And so, the videos that are on my channel are <laughs> Achievement Hunter videos and then there's videos from the Supernatural uh, convention. Uh, one year my dad was able to get me gold passes which were super expensive and I'm so thankful for him. He's such a great guy. <laughs> um, but my dad got me gold passes to go see the convention. I was sitting in the second row um, so there was only one row of people in front of me uh, and I was like man I should probably take some videos while I'm here because like I had a whole bunch of friends that were into Supernatural and I was like, I'm really lucky to be where I am so I might as well take videos. Um, so yeah, I took videos from the convention and I got to meet Jared Jensen, Misha, Mark, all of them. I've met them a few times. I got pictures with them. They're really, really nice guys. They're like one of the greatest casts on TV like ever. They're super nice. Every person that I've met, which I've met most of the cast, is super, super sweet. Um, so I think that's what you're talking about. If not, Taco, leave the comment down below if I answered incorrectly because I wasn't sure how to interpret that question, but I think that's what you're talking about. Um, and what got me into Achievement Hunter was Gavin, actually. So my most recent video that I did, uh, Achievement Hunter Gavin versus Slow Mo Guys Gavin, um, that was pretty much how I got into him was like the basis of that video. I was a Slow Mo Guys fan because I love videography and stuff like that and I found Gavin's channel years ago. And so I've been a Slow Mo Guys fan for probably like six or seven years. Like I love, I, I used to watch him in high school and I'm graduated college now. I'm going into grad school. So like it's been a long time. Um, but I used to love Slow Mo Guys. I still do. I, every time they upload, I watch it immediately. And it's one of the few channels that I do that with. Achievement Hunter is the other one, of course. But um, yeah, so I, I love Gavin's channel. And I remember 
I think this is what happened. This might be like a false memory that I've created, but I have this like vivid memory of me watching a Slow Mo Guys video and in the recommended was a cunning stunt video from the Let's Play channel. And I saw cunning stunt and I was like, huh? And I was like, I have to watch this because I knew it was a GTA video because I could see the thumbnail and I read the title that it was GTA 5 and it was a it was a stunt race. And I was like, I got to know what this is talking about. And so I went and watched the video and I remember watching it going, I have no idea what the fuck I'm watching, but this is hysterical. And I was like, well, that's Gavin. I can hear Gavin. I was like, that guy, Michael, sounds really familiar. Turned out Michael was from Rage Quit the Impossible Game, which was another video that I had loved when I was a kid. Um, so I recognized Michael from that video. And I was like, well, I like Michael. I love Gavin. I was like, might as well keep watching. And I was like, that Ryan guy is really funny. And Jeff has got a crazy laugh. And I ended up just staying. And so I remember going through the cunning stunt playlist and I watched all of the stunt races and then I moved on to the transform races and then I was just basically watching anything that they did in GTA 5 and by the time that I was like hooked on it I was like oh I gotta know more about these guys I want to know more about them so I started I subscribed to the let's play channel started watching more of the let's play videos um and I started branching out into like dead by daylight ttt gmod um what else did I watch I watched a lot of stuff I went through a ton of their playlists and stuff. I went Super Bunny Man, all those things, and Play Pals and all that stuff. And then I found the Achievement Hunter channel and realized that they did more behind the scenes stuff, which is interesting to me as someone who works in like the film industry. So I love the behind the scenes stuff, but I also love the content that they're creating, which is kind of rare. Usually you get like, you either like one or the other. It's not usually common that you like both, but I loved the guys. They were super funny. I love their interactions off camera, well it's off camera, but like not for the Let's Play channel, but I loved them just in their office hanging out doing dumb shit and I loved them doing dumb shit in like the Let's Play community. So I basically just fell in love with their channel, but this is a really back ass words way of getting back to the point, but the point was I liked Gavin first. Uh, Gavin was my favorite for a really long time. And then Ryan took over and then now it's just like, I go through weeks where it's like for three weeks I was like, Michael's my favorite. Then I was like, I love that man, Jeff. Jeff's my dude. And then I was like, Jeremy's my favorite achievement hunter. And then I was like, wait, Gavin is so funny. Like I just go around and around and around with who's my favorite. But yeah, basically it was because of Gavin. I was a Slow Mo Guys fan, found the Let's Play channel through him, found the community. It's been smooth sailing ever since. So Bionics98 asks, how long does it take you to go through age content? Do you keep a vault of moments as, your casu as you casual watch? I can read, I promise. Um, do you keep a vault of moments as you casual watch what they upload or is there a group of you that holds moments for keepsakes? So to go through Achievement Hunter contents, I'm assuming you mean for making my videos and stuff. Um, it can take me upwards of a week depending on what the subject material is. So the longest process that I had was five weeks and that was the Achievement Hunter accurately guessing the traitor in Gmod. That took me forever to do because there was like, I had to go through like a hundred and something videos. So, I mean, you figure you have a hundred videos that are ranging from anywhere between 30 and an hour long, so 30 and 60 minutes. Yeah, so it was a lot. So uh, that one took me a long time to do because I basically like there was no way I was able to skim through them at all either because I had to watch every single round of TTT and Gmod to see if anyone was like, well, I think it might be Michael and it was Michael like I had to watch to find every single moment. So that was really long, but I would say like in general, it takes me about a week, maybe five or six days. Um, the good thing about the videos that I make are that they're pretty specific. So whenever I go into looking for content, it's usually pretty structured. Like I know, okay, well, I don't need to care if Ryan's on screen because I'm not looking for Ryan moments. I'm looking for Alfredo moments. So I know that, okay, in this video, there is a moment where Alfredo does X. I'm just going to go to that part of the video. So usually I kind of know what I'm looking for when I go into a video. Um, so it's a lengthy process. It's one of the longer portions of making a video, but it's not the worst. It's usually about a week, which isn't really that bad. And then do I keep a vault of moments as I casual watch? Yes, I do. So um, I have a list on my computer that I keep of different video ideas that I've had for Achievement Hunter compilations that I want to make someday in the future. 
and usually as I watch, if I see a moment and go, oh, that would be so funny in a compilation, I just write it down. And so I'll mark it and say like, TTT, whatever the TTT video is, I'll timestamp it. And sometimes that's all I do. I don't even provide context because I figure by the time I get around to making the video, I'll just be looking for moments anyway. And so I'll just be like, oh, I'll go here, see what it is, be like, yep, that's it. And decide if I want to keep it or not. Um, but there are also times like more specific moments that are like, like the Edgar thing and um, now I can't think of other moments, but like specifically, let me just use Edgar as an example. The Edgar moment, like I didn't know particularly what videos those were from, but I remembered the Edgar moments, like Ryan's Edgar moments happening. And I knew that when I made a Ryan compilation, I had to include the Edgar moments because that was just a thing. Um, so I never timestamped it or anything, but it's just one of those like things that sticks with you. I have those as well where it's like, I'll be like, oh, the next time I make a video, like for instance, the next time I make an Alfredo video, which by the time you watch this, that, that video might have come out because I think it's the next one I'm going to make after my Achievement Hunter Destroying Their Office. Because um, I haven't actually started that video yet. As the time of filming this, I haven't started editing that video yet. Um, but like I know that when I make my Alfredo video, I have to include Lava Chicken, which is from the Achievement Hunter channel. They did Lava Chicken. Um, because that was one of the funniest Alfredo moments that I've ever seen. Uh, so there's like, there's bits and pieces of things that I do remember as like being particularly funny, but there's also like, if I see a specific moment that I maybe might not remember offhand, I'll write it down. So it kind of goes back and forth between the two. So Christopher John McFires, it's a cool name, uh, says, do you plan on making videos based on other gaming groups like Game Attack or Funhouse? So, I would like to. I'm just not super into other particular gaming channels. I'm getting more into them, but as of right now, I'm not particularly into them. Um, I do watch Rooster Teeth's content, so when Rooster Teeth does do gaming videos, I do end up seeing them, even though they're not like, they're not the same as Achievement Hunter, who is clearly a Let's Play channel. I do watch other gaming channels, but not as particularly focused as I do on Achievement Hunter and the Let's Play channel. Um, I watch Markiplier, but I don't watch every video that he uploads, though I do love his FNAF series. It's my favorite series on his channel. I also watch some of Crank Gameplays. I watch him too. Um, so I watch other gaming groups, but I mean, I would be interested in doing other compilations based on other groups. It just depends on if they strike my fancy or not. Like I did really like the TTTs that AH did with Yogg's cast. Like those were fun. And those guys seemed interesting, so I might dig into Yogg's cast a little bit. Um, Funhouse, I've never really gotten into Funhouse. Like, I really like Elise. I think Elise is really funny, but, like, Lawrence used to piss me off. I do like Adam, too. Adam's pretty cool. Um, but I never really got super into Funhouse, or I've actually never watched any Game Attack. I do like Game Grumps, though. They're funny. So maybe in the future, um, just as of right now, I have no plans to. So Connor S asked, uh, what got you into the vids that you're currently making? So I kind of answered this with uh, number one taco, but basically I really liked Gavin and I liked his videos and I like to edit. So it kind of just went together like that. So Dream King asked, uh, how did you discover you liked editing Achievement Hunter content to distill it to the funniest form? Um, so I've always liked to edit there's more questions that I have in here that are based on that. So I'll kind of just skim around this question a little bit, but I really like to edit and I started making videos cause I was bored. Um, I graduated in December of 2019 and I posted my first Ryan video in January of 2020. So I was home with nothing to do. And all I watched was achievement hunter. And I was like, I've got a great idea. Check out the big brain on Allie. Uh, yeah, it was basically what it was. I love to edit and I was bored and I was like, mm, I've never made a compilation before. Let me see if I can. That's literally it. <laughs> so Decidmic Voice asked, did you, oh, I can't read. Good God. When did you start to edit videos? Also, do you have some tips for people who are just starting to learn how to edit, stay safe and take care? You as well. Um, so I started editing videos about eight years ago about I'm 22 turned 23 this year and I started when I was in high school I was 17 when I graduated so I was 16 when I started senior year which meant I was 15 in my junior year so yeah I was 15 so I turned 23 this year so eight years just about eight years um I went to a technical school for half the day called the career, the career and technology center 
and um, I went for the television multimedia program. That's where I learned how to edit uh, was when I was there. And then that carried on into college. So I started editing a long time ago, almost 10 years. Ugh. Um, and do I have tips for people who are starting to learn how to edit? Yeah, just start editing. You get better with practice. Like I know that that's the most cliche thing in the world to say, but when I first started editing, it was my favorite thing to do. I loved it so much and I would just edit all the time. And it was like, I would work on group projects at my tech school and I'd be like, you guys film everything? I'll edit it. Don't worry about it. I'll edit everything. And I just loved it. I loved doing it. I had so much fun editing and the more I edited, the better that I got. And it was just, you know, if you don't know something too, just look it up. That's what I do. If I'm editing and I'm like, Hey, I don't know what's going on with my aspect ratio or I don't know why this clip won't load or I'm having issues in Premiere Pro. I just Google it. Like, man, I have no shame anymore. Like I know that there are people who are like afraid to ask questions in class. That's never been me. Cause I'm like the most outgoing person you could ever meet in the entire world. But like, if I have a question, I have no issue just Googling it and being like, Hey, I don't know how to do this. Or you could watch a video on how to edit. I have one on my channel. Editing is not hard, it's tedious. And when once you learn like the shorthands and stuff, like when you hit V, it's this, or when you hit C, it's that. Like once you hit certain keys and you know how to edit, it's like, goes right by. I mean, if you truly want to learn how to edit, get some software and just toss some clips in and just go ham. It's the best advice I can give to anyone who wants to start. So Earth, which is hysterical, Earth wants to know why I started. Um, I started because I was bored and I had just graduated and I was waiting to hear back from grad schools. Um, I was originally after I graduated, I was supposed to graduate in the spring of 2019 because that would have been my, my eight semesters, my four years. I technically did nine semesters at college, but two of those semesters, once I was overseas and the other one, I was at an internship in a different state. So I technically only did seven semesters on my campus, but I only did eight semesters of classes, but I had nine semesters overall, if that makes any sense. Cause when I was on internship, I was working. So I wasn't taking any classes. Um, so I graduated late. I graduated the same year, just a couple months later. So I graduated in December and I decided I wanted to go to grad school and I knew that I grad school wasn't going to start to the fall. So I was like, I got nothing to do for like eight months. I was supposed to go work at Disney. Uh, I've worked at Disney before, by the way, that was my internship when I was in Florida. Um, I worked at Disney, but I was going to go back to work at Disney for the spring. I'm glad I didn't though. Cause they canceled that program. Um, because of COVID and all that stuff. But I was supposed to go work at Disney and then decided to cancel it. I actually got hired back at Disney, but I canceled it because I was like, I'm going to grad school. And I really just wanted a semester off before I jumped back into school. Um, which ended up being really smart because I just ended up quarantined in my house for like, I've been basically in my house for the last seven months since I graduated. So um, I needed something to do. And I knew that when I went to grad school, one of the classes that I'm supposed to be taking is production one, which I've taken four times already. Cause I took it in college twice and in high school twice. So it's fun. Um, so I knew that I'd have to be taking it again. Um, so I decided to make sure that my editing was brushed up. So I decided to start editing compilations as a way to keep my skills up to date so that when I went to grad school, I wasn't like, I've never seen this before. So, um, basically it was just a way for me to keep my skills up to check. So Earth also asked, um, if you weren't editing achievement hunter content, what would you be doing? That's a damn good question. Like I said, I was supposed to be going to grad school. I mean, I, I am going to grad school. I just don't start until August, but um, I mean, school stuff, I'm assuming. Like I said, I graduated undergrad already, but I'm going into grad school, so I don't know. I didn't really have any plans. Actually, I take that back. I was supposed to be traveling in May. I was supposed to go traveling. Um, I was gonna go to England, Scotland, France and Belgium. That was where I was supposed to go. Um, so that was a bummer. And then COVID happened. So I didn't get to do that. Um, but yeah, that was what I was supposed to be doing. And then, um, I was hoping to get a job to work for this like eight month period that I wasn't in school. 
but I ended up not getting a job and then by the time like January hit we were already getting reports about COVID so it just never ended up working out like that um have I ever wanted to join Community Hunter Jeremy and Matt essentially joined in the same way yeah absolutely um I've filmed this Q&A I think twice already because I filmed it once when I was actually editing the Gavin video and then twice after because I realized I was going to do a separate video. This is the third time I'm filming it just because I have more questions now and it's just I needed to film today anyway so I just decided to refilm. Um, but I said in one of the previous times that I answered this question that um, I'm actually really sad that the Let's Play community channel is no longer active or at least as far as I know it's no longer active um, because I would have loved to have worked with that because I haven't had a ton of interaction with other Achievement Hunter content creators like um, like Hembo. Like I've never spoken to Hembo, but I love his content. I watch all his content. Same with like Craig Visnevec, I think is his name. He actually commented on one of my, or two of my community posts actually. And I think he commented on my Gavin video. I love his videos too. I watch his videos and stuff. Um, and so like there's a whole like massacre man like there's a whole bunch of achievement hunter content creators that i watch that i would be so interested in getting to know and like working with and collaborating with and i would love to be a part of a community channel like that i mean yeah i would love to work for achievement hunter like i'm not gonna pussyfoot around that i would love to work for achievement hunter i'd love to be the next jeremy like hey you were big in the community let's hire you but like i think there's definitely other people like hembo who have earned their place a little bit higher than i have i've only been making content for them for like seven months but like wow has it been that long damn okay anyway but yeah i would love to work with them and i would love to be part of the community but that's just because i think the achievement hunter community is great i know that community has their issues as all communities do but every action and interaction that I've had with people in the community has been wonderful um so I very much am near and dear to my heart to this community and I would love to get to know people more and be a part of like community hunter and stuff like that um have I ever attended RTX or comic-con I've never attended I almost went to comic-con the year that actually that I came back from I studied abroad in England um, in 2017 and I was there from January until June. That year my dad actually was like this close to getting tickets to uh, San Diego Comic-Con and my mom was like, Alan, she just came back from England, like no. And so we decided not to go, but um, Comic-Con is on my bucket list. It is absolutely, I will be going to Comic-Con at some point in my life. Um, and RTX, I was hoping to go to RTX this year, but covid so i can't and it's actually really funny um one of my best friends michelle is also a big achievement hunter fan and she's like convinced me that when we go to rtx we have to dress up as like the bunnies from super bunny man so she wants to be i think she wants to be michael and she wants me to be gavin or maybe it's vice versa i don't know but so if you ever see me at rtx i might be dressed like a giant rabbit who knows um but yeah i, I actually really want to go to rtx um i also want to do ah live if i can um, the only thing is is that they're based out of Austin and I live on the East Coast, but I'm moving to California So well if COVID doesn't chill the fuck out I'm supposed to be moving to California. So they do do shows out in California So maybe I can make it to some of those if not I am willing to fly to Texas take a couple days off So yes, you'll if you ever attend RTX you might see me there I'll definitely be posting it on my community page also obviously like if I go but um, I haven't gone yet But it is on my list of things to do um, and who or what would you say to someone in Achievement Hunter or Rooster Teeth if given the opportunity? Um, I've technically interacted with a couple people from RT. Like, I, Trevor's liked a couple of my tweets, Meg, and like, um, who else? Michael responded to me on Twitter once, which was a whole thing. Michael roasted me. I deserved it. I was moral of the story, mind your business. Oh, I actually, I played, uh, Jackbox with Ryan on his stream once. I mean, if I if I could say anything to them, I'd say thanks because I think it's always nice to thank content creators and people who make content that you really like, show them how much it means to you to know that they are providing you with content and you appreciate it. Because unfortunately, when you get notoriety with people, especially people like Achievement Hunter who are a huge channel. I mean, they're one of the biggest channels that's under the Rooster Teeth umbrella. They're I think they're the biggest of the let's play channels and stuff and i mean you know they have under their collective belt from let's play and achievement hunter i mean they have five million subscribers 
And like, that's not a number to scoff at. And unfortunately, a majority of the comments are always going to be criticism. Like, oh, well, they're dumb, they didn't know how to do this. Or I hate when Fiona does that. Or I wish Lindsay did this. Or Gavin is really stupid, he should do that. Unfortunately, that's what 80% of their comments are gonna be. But those other 20% of those comments are gonna be things like, hey, I really loved this video. This was my favorite video that you guys have made. I watch this all the time. Those types of things, I think content creators don't get those as enough, enough, like, and I think that we should give out positive comments more than criticism. I mean, criticism, criticism is great, especially when it's constructive, but I mean, it's just, I would say thank you personally, just to be like, hey, like, I know that times are tough. I know that you guys don't have to be doing what you're doing. You guys are working triple what you guys normally do. And for me, I just wanna say thank you. Like, Trevor and Alfredo, um, as of today, they just dropped Red Wed yesterday like their new podcast on true crime and stuff and i listened to it this morning when i was getting ready and i really really enjoyed it so i tweeted at them and i said like hey guys i just listened i'm super pumped for the the series you guys make great hosts and just sent the tweet just because on the off chance that they do see it like i just want them to know that like hey i appreciate what they're doing so if i could say something to them i'd say thank you for what they're doing and i appreciate all their hard work so george thompson asks what's your favorite achievement hunter moment i don't know if I could pick one like moment achievement hunter moment I don't know they're kind of idiots I keep thinking about this question I keep coming back to super bunny super bunny is like one of my favorite play pal series I think it is my favorite play pal series I've watched it a few times um I always go back to it it's just it is so fucking funny. It's really funny because my dad watches my dad watches all of my uh, gaming compilations, and he was watching the Gavin video, and he's seen me watching Super Bunny Man before because he's you know he's seen my other videos, he's seen bits and pieces of it, and he was like, he came up to me one day, he's like, that bunny game's only like fifteen dollars at Best Buy or something, and he's like thinking about buying it because it looks so ridiculous, which is just so funny to me. Um, so I I think if I had to pick a moment achievement hunter moment maybe it would be super bunny um if not the lava chicken the floor is lava that was also pretty funny like i watch those videos whenever i need a good laugh they always make me laugh so maybe maybe those maybe those are my two favorite achievement hunter moments so isabella hyde asked what other things are you interested in outside of ah also keep up the great work on your videos thank you um so if you couldn't tell i like makeup that's just a thing I have a lot of it, too much, some might say, some being my family and also me. Um, I really like makeup. I used to watch a ton of makeup tutorials, don't really anymore. Um, but yeah, I really like makeup. I like doing my makeup. I like doing other people's makeup. It's just fun. It's therapeutic. Um, I love movies. Marvel is like a huge, 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 huge part of my life. I have a Captain America tattoo on my shoulder. Um, and I have a Game of Thrones tattoo right here, <laughs> so I have a big tattoo right there. Um, anything that's like fantasy, I'm like super into, so Game of Thrones, um, Lord of the Rings, Witcher, Star Trek, Star Wars, which are not fantasy, they're like science fiction. Those are all like, say lovey. Um, Harry Potter, Marvel, not really huge into DC, but I liked the DC TV shows. The movies are less than desirable liked wonder woman it's a good movie um so yeah huge into marvel i love movies and tv shows they're like my favorite things to do is like watch tv shows and get completely engulfed and engrossed by them i'm also a writer um actually as of today last night work background preface um I'm hoping to be a screenwriter someday. I, that's gonna come up later in one of these other questions, so I won't touch on that too much, but um, I'm a writer. I've been writing for, I've been writing longer than I've been editing, so I've been writing for like, God, probably like 12 years or something like that. Like I used to write short stories and like notebooks and stuff, and then I started writing fan fiction when I was like 13, I think. Yeah, like right around the time I was 13, I wrote fan fiction for a couple years. Um, I it's whatever I have no shame anymore um and I kept it up and started writing like original stories and have now turned them into a tv show because that's kind of what I'm going into is the film industry 
And so I have a TV show that I'm working on and I wrote episode four last night in its entirety. It was 51 pages. It took me about six hours, but I did it. Um, that is the most I think I've ever written in one sitting. And also I've never written an entire episode before in one go, which was pretty cool. So now I have four episodes of a TV show that I'm working on. Um, so that's also something that I do in my free time. I'm either editing, watching videos, watching movies, and or TV shows, or I'm writing. Those are like the only four things that I do. I, okay, the first time I read this name, I thought it was Jama, but I think it's Jamia, Jamia? It's J-A-M-Y-A-W. How often into a video do you simply regret the idea too much achievement hunter must be dangerous? <laughs> I've, I've never really regretted an idea. The closest I've come was the achievement hunter, um, Achievement Hunter accurately guessing the traders. That's definitely the closest I've ever come. And it wasn't because of the video itself, it's because of what spurred in the comments, which was, you need to go back and do it, but include the times where they were wrong and subtract points. Are you on crack? No, <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, I love you guys and I would do a lot for my community because you guys are awesome and you guys make me happy and I love working for you guys and like working with the community to make videos, but like, no, I'm <laughs> not doing that video. <laughs> that would just, that video, if I were to do it like that would take me, if I had to estimate, it would probably take me two and a half months. No. I'm just not doing it. So that's probably the closest I've ever come because there were there were multiple comments where people were like, you should do this instead. And I was like, uh-uh, it's not happening, chief. So long story short, I don't regret anything, but y'all be tempting me. Jackson Price asked, how selective is the process of finding clips? Like, do you just watch a random video and go, oh, that'd be good to add, or is it more of a meticulous selection process? This kind of loops back into one of the questions that I answered earlier. Um, basically, it's depending on, completely dependent on the idea of the video. So one of the video ideas that I haven't started working on yet, um, but one to in the future is like a, Alfredo being a crackhead or something. So to show you kind of what my thought process would be finding clips for that, it would be all the moments have to be Alfredo centric. So they're about Alfredo or they have to be with Alfredo in the background doing something that's particularly funny. So Alfredo saying something or doing something on camera, something that makes you laugh or something that makes me laugh, I guess would be the better judge of that. But um, that's basically what it boils down to is it's completely dependent on what the idea of the video is. Um, it's kind of like what I said earlier. Um, sometimes I see a moment and I go, yeah, that'd be great to add. And I jot it down. So it's, eh, it's, it's whatever the idea is. There are some videos that are much looser in terms. Like I did a video that was like 69 minutes of Gmod and TTT. That was just whatever moments that I could find. I could make a hundred of those videos with how much content they had on Gmod. But like for Ryan Haywood, like his weirdest skills, like that those were very specific videos and clips that I was looking for. So it kind of goes back and forth. So Jay RMW asks, what kind of AH style editing is your favorite? All the editors seem to have a particular style that I think is super cool. Um, personally, I really liked whoever they had on TTT. I agree, TTT has been super, super fun. Um, I also really like whoever's been doing Minecraft and GTA. Like as of today, the GTA that came out, was today Tuesday? I don't know what day it is. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Um, the GTA that came out yesterday on Monday was the end of the uh, stunt jumps that they were doing, that series. And I think Ashley's the one that edits those. And I always really love the GTA videos. Um, those are always super fun. So any of their like big series like GTA or Minecraft or TTT, those are, whoever edits those are usually my favorite. I feel bad for not knowing which editor does what series. Like I feel like that's something as an editor that I should know. Um, but I don't know, but I mean, the TTTs are always super fun. They're always, I mean, whenever you're working with multicam, which is when you're working with more than one screen. So like when there's six of them playing GT GTA, you're working with six potential cameras at all times. It's super hard. And I mean, everyone who works in the B crew and like the AH office and stuff, like they've been doing this for a while now. It's so, like, they've got it down to like a system, but like 
man, I know how hard that is and like that shit is tough. So like good on them. So like all of the editors are fantastic and wonderful and I'm, I love all of them. But I think, I think Ashley's like their senior editor. I think she's one of the older editors that they've had for a while. Um, and I know she does GTA. So I, I really like all those. I think this is Jose, Jose C. Please forgive me if that's wrong um, and correct me. Uh, first off, thank you so much for all the work you put into your videos. They are absolutely amazing and you seriously have some amazing skill. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we appreciate it so much. And question, haha, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, schooling, where are you from, etc. so we can know the master plan on your work. This is very sweet. Thank you. Um, so I'm from Maryland. Uh, I grew up, lived here pretty much my whole life. Um, I studied abroad for six months. I lived in England and I traveled to 11 countries when I was there. I've been to 12 countries because technically the United States is a country, even though it's a shithole. Um, so I was in England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, France, Spain, Italy, Greece. The Vatican City is technically its own country, which is in Italy. Norway. Switzerland. Did I say Switzerland? I don't know. But yeah, I've been to, I've been to 11 countries. Um, well, technically 12. But uh, so I studied abroad, had an amazing time. It was like the best time of my life. If you have the opportunity to study abroad, you should do it. It's fucking incredible. Um, so I studied abroad. I worked at Disney. I worked in Magic Kingdom in Tomorrowland. I was an attractions worker. So I worked on the People Mover and the Astro Orbiter, which is called Rocket Tower. Um, I worked there for six months. I worked there from August until December of 2018. Actually, no, I worked until January. I worked in January a little bit too, but it was only like the first week of January. Um, I worked there. I had an amazing time there. Some of my best friends are people that I worked with when I was at Disney. I got to work all the Halloween parties. I got to meet Scarlett Johansson and Tina Fey there. I also met Kellyanne Conway, but I don't really think anyone's going to care about that. But those are just some of the people I met. I missed Tom Cruise by like five fucking minutes. He was supposed to walk right by the area that I was working in and I knew he was coming and I got fucking bumped to the next position. And then after I moved to that position, someone came up to me. They're like, oh my God, I just met Tom Cruise. And I was like, <laughs> so yeah, I worked at Disney. Um, that was a lot of fun. I just graduated in December, which I've mentioned a few times now. Um, I was in a sorority for three and a half years. I mean, technically I'm still in the sorority, but I'm just an alum now. I was in Alpha Sigma Alpha. Let's go crowns up. Um, hmm, what else? I'm an only child. Favorite color is green. I really like mythology science fiction, fantasy, all that type of stuff. I don't know. If you have any more questions about me, you can ask them below. I'll see if I can answer them. <laughs> so Joshua Panuco, Panico, I'm not sure how to say that. Um, are the compilation videos monetized? And if the answer to the first question is yes, would you consider getting all, giving all the profits from the compilation videos to charity? To answer your first question, no, none of my videos are monetized except I haven't posted the behind the scenes video yet as of this video, which when this video comes out, you should have already seen that one. Um, that one might be monetized. I don't know. I definitely play bits and pieces of my Gavin video in that video. So I don't know if YouTube is going to copyright that or not. Um, this video should be one of the videos that is monetized. Um, maybe I actually don't even have monetization set up on my YouTube. Um, I'm not a YouTube partner, which means that I don't make any money like I've never put in any bank details or anything. Like I don't get a check in the mail. None of my videos are monetized. Like that's a question like, and I actually addressed this on my community page probably a couple weeks ago. Um, because I was getting kind of rude comments from people being like, it's not fair that you make money off these. I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't make any money off of these videos. Um, I do this completely for fun and for free. No content creator like me, like Hembo, Craig Viznavec, like none of them. We don't make money off these videos. We can't because the content is copyrighted. So for all of you out there who are watching these videos and thinking like, wow, fuck those people for making money. We're not. Relax. Calm down. We're not making any money off of these. We can't. We can't make money off of other people's content and we don't. So it's fine. Um, if I was making money, I would consider giving it to charity, but I can't answer that question because I don't make money off these videos. So. 
So Kaylee Marie asked, what type of editing software do you use? Is it free slash how much does it cost and how long actually editing does it usually take? So I use Premiere Pro. That's the main software that I use. I also have previously used in the past Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Pro X. I haven't used any of those softwares to make any of my Achievement Hunter videos. I basically just work entirely in Premiere Pro. It is not free. It's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud. I want to say I looked it up and it was like 80 bucks to purchase the software or you could just get the entire cloud which comes with Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects. No, um, so it's not free. Um, and how long editing does it usually take? It usually takes me anywhere from like six to eight, maybe nine days to edit a video. It really depends on what the content is. So like the Gavin video took me five days, but the Achievement Hunter accurately guessing the trader took me like 10 or 12. So it just depends on what the content is, but it ranges usually about a week if I had to estimate. Kaylee Marie also asked, what type of career are you wanting to go into besides making our days better by making these amazing videos? What do you do in your spare time? Thank you, Kaylee. That's very sweet. Um, so what type of career I want to go into? I want to go into screenwriting. That is what I'm getting my master's in when I go to grad school if COVID ever chills the fuck out, of course. Um, I want to be a screenwriter, which if you don't know anything about screenwriting, basically I'm going to write movies, TV shows. I can even do plays if I wanted to, but I don't really want to because I've never written a play before. But um, I'm currently working on writing a TV show um, for a story that I've been developing for like seven years or something like that. Like it's been a hot minute. I've been working on it for a while. Um, so I'm working on developing that into a TV show. I just finished episode four last night. I'm really happy with it so far. Um, in my spare time, I like to write. I write all the time. I'm working on scripts with other friends too. Like I have, I have a couple friends who are also screenwriters like me who actually got me into screenwriting. My friend Brandon did. And uh, I'm, I've worked with him on like four projects. We've worked on two horror movies. Well, one's a short film. We worked on a horror movie and a short film. And then we worked on a political movie and we're working on a political show right now. So those are the four projects that we're working on. Um, so we're currently working on those. They're kind of, we go in and out on which project we're working on it. Actually, no, I worked on, oh no, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I worked on, it kind of ebbs and flows on which projects we work on together, but he's one of my favorite people to collaborate with. I love the way he writes and stuff. Um, so in my spare time, I help him out with either scripts that he's working on, or I help him develop and create ideas for more scripts that he's working on that I am now a part of. Um, or I write my own stuff, or I watch movies and TV shows and do stuff like that. That's pretty much all I do. I'm kind of chill. I'm a pretty lax person. Kyle Parada, Parada? asks, do you, have to, uh, do you have to watch the videos all the way through when looking for key points or do you have a rough idea of where the moments slash parts are in all the content? Yes and no. Um, so it depends on what the video is. So like for instance, Lava Chicken, I pretty much know what happens in that video. It's like six or seven minutes long, I think. It's not a super long video. So I don't really need to timestamp anything because if it's, if I can't find the moment I'm looking for, I just watch it the whole way through. But for longer videos that are like 30 minutes and upwards, usually I have a timestamp in mind where I'm like, okay, well, I know that at 33 minutes and 26 seconds, Ryan shoots Gavin and it's really funny. So like usually I know about when moments happen and if I don't have the timestamp and just have the video title, I will roll through the comments until I find it. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do is like, I, I, I make sure now because people found me in Achievement Hunter comp comments because I comment on almost all their videos just because I'm I'm one of those people but um people will find me in the comments and like if I ever quote something from a video I always leave a timestamp just because that's just what I do I'm, I like timestamps so um I will either have a timestamp written down or I'll find it in the comments usually if I need to if it's a longer video if it's a shorter video or if I know about where it is, I don't really need one. Like if I know it's the first thing that happens in this video or it's the last thing that happens in this video, usually I can find it. Or if it's one of those videos that I can skim through and be like, okay, well here's where the screen changes so I know it happens here. I don't really need the timestamp. I can kind of just eyeball it. Uh, so Lindsay Reimer says, how you found Achievement Hunter if you plan on going into an editing career and future plans for your channel. So I found Achievement Hunter, like I said, through Gavin. Um, if I plan on going into editing, editing is not my 
primary focus, but if an editing job happens to fall into my lap that seems really interesting that I'm interested in, hell yeah, I'm all for it. Like, if Achievement Hunter called me tomorrow and was like, hey, do you want to fly to Texas and come work for us? I'd be like, fuck yeah, I do, and I'd go work for them. Um, it's not the direct path that I'm going into, but when I was in college, up until I think like my junior year, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a video editor. And my goal was to work for Marvel one day. That was what I wanted to do was I wanted to be a video editor for Marvel and work making their films or making their TV shows. That was what I wanted to do. Um, my goals have shifted a little bit, but I'm like editing is still one of my favorite things to do. It's one of my hobbies, but it's not, it's something that I would almost do as a side job rather than a main focus. Um, and future plans for my channel. I plan to make videos as long as people plan to watch them. Um, I want to keep making content, maybe branch out into some more stuff. I don't know. So one of my best friends, Megan, and I really want to do like a, we don't, it's, we call it a podcast, but it's not really a podcast because I'm assuming we would have on camera, we would be on camera personalities. So my best friend, Megan and I, we really have been discussing the idea of starting our own channel together and doing like a podcast style thing where me and her are both super into true crime. We both really like Barry, Bailey Sarian and um, I'm getting her into Red Web because I really like Red Web. Um, we're into true crime, I'm into makeup. She's less into makeup, but is willing to learn. Like we're thinking about doing some sort of blend of stuff like that, where maybe we sit down and talk about like conspiracy theories, true crimes, basically every other white person that's like, I'm gonna make a YouTube channel and I'm gonna make a podcast. We're gonna do that. I also really would love to dig into like the paranormal and the supernatural because that's a huge interest of mine and mythology as well. So I would love to be able to like sit down and do more stuff like that. Um, having done the behind the scenes video and now having done this video as well, I've learned that I really, really like doing on camera stuff. It feels a lot more personal for me. Like, even though it's just me, my camera and my ring light in this room, I feel like I'm, I am talking to everyone who's watching the video and I would love to be able to do more of that, to sit down and talk about stuff with people that are in my community. Like. I'm kind of a renaissance man, like I do a lot of different types of stuff. I'm super into film, I'm super into movies, but I'm into like a lot more popular stuff. Like I'm not one of those film junkies that's like, I only watch movies that are going to be Oscars. Like no fuck, I watch everything pretty much. Um, I would love to talk about movies. I, I really, I had this idea that I really wanted to do where it was like, it was based off of what Bailey Sarian does where she does the murder mystery and makeup Mondays, but it was makeup and Marvel Mondays is what I wanted to do where Every Monday I sat down and did my makeup, but I talked about Marvel fan theories or characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe or Marvel movies or like what I wanted to happen and like stuff like that. I thought that would be so much fun um, because I've never read the Marvel comics, but I love the movies. I have a Captain America tattoo. Like it, it's just like my whole life. I love Marvel. But I also, like I said, I travel a lot. So I'd love to talk about travel too and like things that I went through when I studied abroad or like working at Disney. Like I don't know how many people can say like, hey, I worked at Disney or I know someone that worked at Disney. And I know that people probably have a lot of questions about that. And I'd love to be able to sit down and talk about that. And I know that my channel is based on me making Achievement Hunter content and that 99.9% .9 of my followers are here for Achievement Hunter content. And that's totally fine. But if there was a percentage of my community that was like, hey, we kind of like you, you're interesting enough, we'd love to see more of you, I would be a thousand percent down to do more on camera stuff. Like it's so much fun to me. And I'd love to do stuff like this where like people send me in like, hey, can you research this and talk about it? Like, hell yeah, I would love to do that. So I hope that in the future I'm able to do more and maybe it wouldn't be like, like I post an Achievement Hunter video like every three weeks maybe every two weeks or every four weeks, I could post an on-camera thing, so like once a month. So that way you guys would actually be getting more content from me, it would just be different. So you'd be getting like me on camera and then you'd be getting my Achievement Hunter compilations like the next week or something like that. Like I think that that would be a lot more fun. Um, and so hopefully in the future, people are interested and they care and I'd really, really like to do some stuff like that. I think that would be a lot of fun. So Liz Mariana asked, how far back do you go date wise for clips that fit the topic of a video you're working on? Now I just have to applaud you for your work. You are making rough times a little bit more bearable for a lot of people. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm sorry things aren't smooth sailing, but time's kind of, this is just the worst year, isn't it? Like this time sucks right now, but 
I'm glad that people have found some solace in the content that I've been putting out. Um, how far back do I go? I go back as far as I need to. Um, if I know that there's a moment from, like for instance in the Gavin video, I used a moment from go to. Oh no, no I'm sorry. This is in the Achievement Hunter Destroying Their Office. There's a moment from go to, which is back in the old 636 office I think. It's like way, way back. Um, like back when Ray was still working there. Like long time ago. Um, so I will go back basically as far as I need to to find content. There's no really like ceiling on how far back I'll go to find something. <sighs> so Miss Radioactive, Radioactive is actually one of my favorite songs by Imagine Dragons, um, asked, uh, did you go to school to learn editing? Yes, I did. I went to a technical school, the Korean Technology Center, um, and I learned how to edit. And then I also learned in college as well. Um, how long did it take you to learn all of this? Uh, and do you enjoy it? What's the best slash worst parts of editing? It's not a stupid question. Um, the best and worst parts of editing the best part is just like the payoff of like having it be done and knowing that you created something. Yes, the stuff that I'm working with is other people's content, but I'm putting it together in a way that either makes sense or like flows together differently. And that's always rewarding is when you finish a video and you know like, wow, I just worked my ass off to make this video and now it's done and I get to watch it and I get to share it with other people. That's the best part of it. The worst part is fucking rendering. I hate rendering so much. Rendering is the worst part of editing. Basically, it's like you sit there and you make your in and out points and you say render all and it says, okay, come back in three hours and you're like, cool. It's just, it's so tedious. It takes forever. And sometimes your render files don't even save correctly. So then you have to re-render everything the next day or the next time you edit. So rendering is the worst part. Um, it took me to learn how to edit. I just hopped around questions. I realized I did that. Um, to learn editing, I, I picked it up pretty quickly. I'm pretty good with technology and like softwares and stuff. I'm pretty quick to learn. Um, I picked it up probably within a couple weeks of being taught it. Um, it's kind of like I said earlier, once you learn like basic shorthands and stuff, you can get started evolving your own style of editing. Like I think I have a very particular style, which is hard cuts, fast cuts, putting shit back to back that like goes cohesively. Like a lot of people will comment on my videos and be like, I loved the cut from this video to this video. Like it really made me laugh or like one of my most popular cuts, which was actually an accident, didn't do that on purpose, was from the, uh, was it the best of Gmod video? I think it was, it was one of the TTT videos. I don't remember which one it was, but it was when it goes from a uh, big chungus, bigger trouble where Jack kills Fiona. And then it cuts to the Waluigi video where Jack is like, basically Jack in the chungus video is like, oh, there's Fiona. I see Fiona. Fiona's dead. And then it cuts to Jack in the other video going, Fiona, are you dead? Okay. Fiona's dead. And it's so fast. You don't even notice it. And a lot of people were like, holy shit, I didn't realize those were two different videos because they were seamless. Like stuff like that, like that's kind of my style. I like to do it like that. Um, so to do that, to develop your own style, obviously comes over time. But um, I mean, it didn't really take me that long to learn how to edit. It took me a couple weeks to really get this, the software down. But like I said, I'm kind of a fast learner, so. So Mr. Rasta Wannabe asked, how do you efficiently go through all the content to make these compilations? Do you use Reddit or Twitter or something? and let people comment moments or do you skim through all the videos or do you just have an amazing memory and anytime something happens you can just remember it and recall it and pull it up. So yes, I think to all of these questions. So um, to efficiently go through all of my stuff, I usually start with a general list of moments that I myself have compiled, usually from my own memory or from my list of things that I'm like, hey, if you ever make this video, here are moments that you wanna use. I usually have a list when I start and then I branch out into the community and I say, hey, I'm making this video, send me things and people do. So I mainly use uh, Reddit and YouTube. So I post on my community and I let my community members send me moments. And then if I don't either get enough moments from the community page or if I'm looking for particular moments or different moments, I'll branch out into Reddit and say like, Hey Reddit, I'm making this video. Please give me things. Uh, Cause I get more interaction usually, I actually get more interaction on my YouTube channel than I do on Reddit. Um, Cause posts on Reddit get lost in the void. Um, but yeah, usually I reach out and ask for people uh, to send me moments, but I also do 
just generally remember some stuff and I also usually have stuff written down. So it's kind of a combination of all of those. So Nate Dorndale asks, uh, what goals do you have for the future of your channel and your edits? Future for my edits, I hope my edits get better. I always wanna get better. I always want to make better content and I always want people to be pleased with the stuff that I'm making. Um, for future of my channel, kinda touched on this earlier, I really would like to branch out and do some more stuff. I don't know if I would make necessarily compilations on other channels. The only other channel I am interested in making compilations for is Unus Honest, which is Markiplier's second channel that he has with Crank Gameplays. Unus Honest means one year in Latin, and unfortunately what they're doing, it's like a social experiment where they're posting every a video every day, and after 365 days, one year, they're gonna delete the entire channel. So if I were to make a compilation about them, I'd have to delete it when the channel's over because they are very much like, if you have a video about us up after the time, after our channel's gone, we're gonna like cease and desist you. And I was like, okay. Um, so I'd love to do videos about them. But as for the future of the channel, I'd like to do more, obviously more Achievement Hunter compilations. I have an entire list of videos that I wanna get through. But I think mainly, I think, getting my own community comfortable enough with me to be willing to watch videos of me doing shit or whatever. Um, so I think in the future I'd like to do more on-camera stuff, but it's totally dependent on what the community wants. P. King says, I have questions. You've mentioned that you graduated. Uh, what were you actually studying? My degree is a Bachelor of Science in Mass Communication with a focus in audio and video production and a English minor specializing in creative writing. Um, so that was my degree. So yes, it's I, I have a degree in audio and video editing, so for as much as I say that editing is easy, I have been doing it for like eight years, so just keep that in mind. And uh, what will you be pursuing career-wise when the p pandemic passes? Like I said, I'm going to be a screenwriter, hopefully. Um, so uh, hopefully someday you guys will be watching a TV show and you'll see, like, written by Ali Kitaguchi and you'll be like, wait a minute, I know that bitch. Me. <laughs> uh, Roberto Martinez says, ooh, there's so many questions I can think of. How do you download videos you need to work on your edits? Is there a particular program that you or website that you use? There's a website that I use. It's like N-E-N dot four... It's like basically I googled YouTube downloader and just went to the first website. It's basically what I do. Um, the gist of it is you copy the video URL that you're watching and you paste it in there and you download it as an mp4. It's really simple. It's all I do. Um, how do you keep your files organized? I am meticulous about organization. Not in real life, but like in technology, very organized. I keep everything in folders. So I have a folder that's literally like on my hard drive. It says Achievement Hunter Projects. You go into that, everything's labeled by number, so it's like, number one, Ryan uh, Ryan Haywood's Weirdest Skills, because that was the first video I made, so they're all labeled by what order I posted them on YouTube and like when I made them and stuff. And then in there, there's a, a folder for secondary footage, which is anything from like memes that I include or like sound effects and stuff like that. There's a videos folder, which is where all the videos go, and then sometimes I have like um, pictures and stuff that are also posted in there as well. So I keep everything pretty organized. Um, it, it may not make sense to other people, but it makes sense to me and that's kind of what matters because I'm the one making the videos, but. Um, any upcoming other projects you have in mind for your channel besides compilations? Like I said, podcast. It's like a vidcast, it's not even really a podcast. I would love to sit in front of the camera and talk theories and like anything. I would love to just sit and chat. Like maybe I could do something like that where I could do like an alley chats like once once a month or something like that where I just sit down and I'm like, hey, so I was re-watching this movie and let's fucking talk about it or something like that. Or you guys could be like, hey, I want to hear you your opinions on this or I'd love to see what you think about that. Or you guys could be like, what music are you listening to? And I could be like, listen, falling in reverse, smash. Like, you know, whatever. I would love to do stuff like that. Um, where do I see myself in five years as an editor? Hopefully better. Hopefully doing some really cool things. Maybe maybe I'm really good at rhythmic editing in five years because uh, that's something that I want to work on in my own personal time. But um, I don't know. I, I hope I'm still making compilations in five years. I hope I'm still having fun making compilations in five years. And I hope that, you know, I don't just kind of fade out. I don't know. I, 
it's kind of hard to say like because in five years I'll have been editing for 13 years it'll be almost 15 years half my life I'll have been editing so you know it's I don't know I, I just hope that I'm still doing it and I hope that I'm still doing it well so we'll see only time will tell so Ruby Berry Pie said, what tends to be your inspiration for making these videos and how much time do you put into them per day? Just curious as someone looking into getting into making my own videos or on something else. So my inspiration comes from me being a fan and watching their content and going, wow, someone should make that. So I think, I was to say, I think I've told the story before, but I just realized that you guys wouldn't have heard this before because you haven't seen the other portions of this that I filmed. Um, the way I got into making the Achievement Hunter videos was I remember being a big fan of Achievement Hunter, watching their content and going, oh my god, someone needs to make a compilation of like all the times Ryan's done something crazy like this, like the knife throwing and all that stuff. And I was like, I looked for them for forever. I kept trying to find these compilations and like I would find the old videos like the best of the Mad King Ryan, but none of them were like recent. They'd all been from like four or five years ago. And I was like, you know, I have editing software, I have experience, fuck it, I'm gonna make it. And that's basically why I did it, is I was like, you know, I don't see these types of videos being made enough, so I'm gonna make them, which is why I do. Which is also why all of my videos are hyper specific. So like, accurately guessing the traitors in TTT, or Alfredo being a crackhead, or Achievement Hunter Gavin versus Slow Mo Guys Gavin, because I can pretty much guarantee you I'm the only person that's done that video. So watch me say that and then that not be true but I mean I looked for compilations and like basically it's it comes from me being frustrated by the lack of content um so I'll be looking for a video and I can't find it and I'm like fuck it I'll make it it's pretty much why I do it um uh hours per day 10 about anywhere from like on a short day 6 to 10 on a long day I think when I made the Gavin video, which was the shortest process, I did like 33 hours on that video, which is like a part-time job. When I worked at Disney, I worked 33 hours a week. Um, so the longer videos, like the Achievement Hunter Accurately Guessing the Traders, I worked on that one for, like I said, like about five weeks, like, cause I researched it, which meant that I watched all the videos for like two weeks, actually edited for like two weeks, and then did like my review phase for like a week. By the time that like that video was posted, I think I had put in like well over a hundred hours. Like it, it's very dependent on how long it takes me to actually edit, but I would say on average in a day, I get like about eight hours in. It's like a, it's like a job. It's like working a job. <laughs> So Sam M asked, uh, how long did it take you to go through every single TTT video and do the manual counter? Five weeks. Five weeks, Sam. It took me a long time. Also, keep up the great work. You're doing a fantastic job for the community. I am thrilled to hear that. I'm so happy that you guys are liking the content and really enjoying it. So thank you guys for watching them. But yeah, five weeks. It took me five weeks to do that shit. Well, how long did it take you to watch every single video? To watch every single video took me about two weeks, but I was watching, I was watching videos for like 12 or 14 hours a day. So Silly Pariah asked, um, are there any other channels that you would make videos for? It's kind of similar. I said earlier Unis Honest, which is, um, like I said, Markiplier and Crank Gameplay is their second channel that they do. Um, I'm trying to think of, are there any other channels that I would make content for? I mean, I'm sure there are. I just having trouble thinking of some. I'm subscribed currently to a lot of like beauty channels, but I haven't watched a beauty video in a hot minute. Hmm. I mean, I would do stuff for Rooster Teeth for sure. Like a video about John or like on the spot or Barbara or something like that. I would do plenty of those. Buzzfeed Unsolved, that would be pretty fun. I'd like to do like the, um, like the out of context Buzzfeed Unsolved. Those are always fun. I don't know. I'd have to think about that, but yes, I would, I, moral of the story, I would consider doing content for other channels. It would just depend on what the channel was and if I could think of them. Uh, Spencer Flora said, I'd love to know your favorite scene slash joke from Achievement Hunter and your favorite game for them to play. Favorite game for them to play? TTT. 100%. I love TTT. I always have fun watching TTT. Um, I also really like Dead by Daylight. Uh, GTA is also like, I'm always so excited when they post GTA videos. Um, I'm trying to think. Super Bunny was fucking hysterical. That is one of my favorite series of all time that they've done. Um, other games that I like them to play. I mean, I... I watch Minecraft. I don't always, 
I don't watch every Minecraft that they post, but I watch like 90% of them. Um, so I do like Minecraft too. Oh, Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six Siege is like one of my favorite games they play. That and PUBG. I really like watching those. I love, I actually posted on Twitter the other day. I was like, should I rewatch the Rainbow Six get good or the PUBG get good? Um, I ended up rewatching PUBG just because it was shorter than the Rainbow Six series. But um, yeah, I fucking love Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six is so much fun to watch, especially with Alfredo when they play with Fredo. Um, so that's probably one of my favorite games for them to play, or at least that's what I'm super into right now. Like, I think I've watched the Rainbow Six get good like four or five times. Like, I love that series. Um, favorite scene or joke? I don't know if I would know that. I don't know if I would be able to answer that. The coin argument is always really funny, but they haven't really brought that up recently. Mark Nutt, of course, very funny, very classic. Um, lovely Ryan was funny. Edgar, of course. I don't know. I don't know if I could pick just one, like one particular joke. I think they're all kind of funny. <laughs> so Silver Iron 20 asks, how's your day been? It's been good. This is the only thing I've done today is film this video and the intro for the behind the scenes video. It's all I've done today. Um, I haven't eaten yet. I am quite hungry. It's 538. Have not eaten yet today, but that's totally fine. I did take a shower. I'm nice and clean. Did my makeup. Time Gaming Bros official. It actually says a fickle, but official. Uh, maybe you could do like a sped up video of you editing and do the like voiceover. This was in response to something else. Um, my personal questions are what computer do you have and what editing software do you use? Oh, and how do you keep yourself awake? Uh, my computer is a MacBook Pro. This is from 2014, so it's like six years old right now. Um, but I use a MacBook Pro 15 inch screen. That's what I use to edit. And I use Premiere Pro, it's my software. Um, how do I keep myself awake? I have insomnia, so I actually don't sleep that much. And that's just not me being quirky and saying that. Like, I genuinely have insomnia. I sleep about three or four hours a night. Um, here, I'll show you what I slept last night. I went to bed late last night because I was writing, but I... On top of having insomnia, I think I also have a sleep disorder. Sleep disorder not confirmed, insomnia confirmed. Um, I think I have a sleep disorder called delayed sleep phase disorder, which from my understanding means that my internal clock runs at a different time than everyone else's, where someone might say, oh, okay, it's nighttime from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. They might think of that 12 hour frame period as being nighttime. I go to bed at like six or seven o'clock in the morning and I wake up at like two or three in the afternoon, but I am fully functional all throughout the rest of the day. Um, yeah, so here's my sleep data from last night if you can see that. If not, I'll post a screenshot of it. I'll take some screenshots so you guys can see. I don't experience light sleep the way that anyone else does, I don't think, uh, because I am fully conscious until I am in REM. Like, until I'm in REM sleep, like, I wake up like that. I'm a super light sleeper, so everything wakes me up. So I'm a light sleeper, I have insomnia, and I think I have a sleep disorder. Um, so it's great. So I sleep, last night it says my total restful time was three hours and 45 minutes. I'm totally fine, like I'm wide awake. I am tired, I feel tired, I feel fatigued, but I'm also just, I'm in a constant state of fatigue. But uh, yeah, I stay up super late. I sleep during the early hours of the morning into the early afternoon, and then I'm awake from like, usually like 2.30 until like 7 a.m. the next day. So whatsoever, if this will open, whatsoever asked outside uh, of all the material to work on, what makes you edit videos that you do? Are you that big a fan of age or do you have a passion for video making? Yes, to both of those. I just genuinely like Achievement Hunter. I think they're super funny. I love their content. They're the first like real gaming channel that I've like really gotten into. I used to watch Markiplier when I was younger. Um, I watched Mark for a long time, really liked his FNAF videos, but never really got like super into it like I was with Achievement Hunter. It's funny because Achievement Hunter has actually gotten me back into Markiplier, which is pretty funny. Um, so yes, I just genuinely like them. I like their content. I like what they do. I like all the boys and the girls. Uh, I think they're all super funny and I love the community that they have. So making videos for them is fun. And I also just really like to edit. So it's just a good way for me to blend those two. Um, so out of all the stuff that I watch, it's just, it was, it was kind of easy for me to do that. Cause it was like, hey, I could make videos on these things that I like. And then I did. <laughs> ya boy, if this will let me click on it, ya boy asked, uh, when did you start watching Rooster Teeth stuff? This might surprise you guys, but just about two years ago. Uh, it's pretty recent. Like I didn't really get into Rooster Teeth 
properly until about two years ago. So like I had seen The Impossible Game, Rage Quit, that was probably the only Rooster Teeth video I had ever seen that I know of. Um, and like I said, didn't start watching Achievement Hunter until Gavin. So I got into the Let's Play community first, basically. Um, so I started watching the GTA videos and all that stuff. And then I realized they had a second channel linked, which was Achievement Hunter, which was them. And I got to see them, like their faces behind their, not in their face cam for the first time and just kind of fell in love with it. And that was kind of when it started was, I, I would think about two years ago, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, but it's been under three years, so. So last question, Zach Griffin asks, uh, what's your preferred editing software to use? Premiere Pro. Um, have you ever done much with editing vocal recordings? Uh, I'd love to hear about how you do it if you have the chance and what's the best way to transition between clips. Glad you're doing the behind the scenes stuff. I hope you watch it and I hope you have a good time watching it, Zach. Um, the best way to transition between clips is totally personal. It's going to depend on what you want to do. Some people actually use transitions like Achievement Hunter uses swipes a lot of the time and they'll add a little sound effect like in between them sliding between clips. Um, for me, I like a fast cut. Uh, that's just always something that I found funny when you're watching something and then it just immediately cuts to something else and you're like uh, It's jarring, but to me that's funny that it's always been that type of humor that I like um, So for me, that's what I prefer to use is just a fast cut which is no editing It's basically two clips are back to back and I do nothing to them um, There are definitely transitions that you can use like a fade or, or zoom or something like that like I don't use any of those, not really. I, actually, I don't think I ever have. Um, so it's totally personal preference. So my advice to you would be to try a few of them and see which one you like best. And maybe you'll find that you either don't wanna use them or you do. Um, and then uh, editing vocal recordings, yes. So like I said earlier, I do have, like part of my degree is in audio production. Um, so I've worked with Adobe Audition is mainly what I use. Um, I edit audio all the time. If you've seen the behind the scenes video, you know, clearly I do edit audio. <laughs> I edit audio all the time in the Achievement Hunter videos, but like specifically audio, I did have to take audio production one and two. Like that was part of my degree that said I had to take that. So I have worked in it before. Audio production is very, very important for video production, but video production was always much more interesting to me because I love the entire process of video production, whereas audio production I think can be a little bit more tedious. Um, and usually people in audio production are going into the music industry and that just wasn't what I was doing. I was going into hopefully the video industry. So um, I can talk more about audio production if you're interested, maybe in a video similar to this one in the future. If you are super interested in that, I definitely could. Um, audio production is basically learning cues and learning how to, I mean, it's you have to learn the software, but it's also learning not necessarily beats, but it's like, I think I talk about this in the behind the scenes video, but there are points in conversation where there's naturally a lull in audio. That was one of them. My sentence just trailed off. That would have been a good place to cut the audio. So it's learning how to find cues like that in people's vocal patterns, in their speech, how they talk, if they have an impediment. Like it's learning how to find the ebb and flow of a person's natural voice and learning how to work around that to make something. So whether you're going into audio production with the intent of using music, you need to focus on vocal cues in singing and in songwriting and stuff like that, as well as in music. But in just general audio production, like if you're editing, like say a podcast, for instance, you have to find where a sentence naturally breaks to cut the audio to make it seamless because the entire point of audio is that you're not supposed to notice it. So yes, I have talked about audio stuff before. If you have more audio questions, leave them for me down below and I'll see if I can answer them. Like I said, audio was never my super strong suit and I only took two classes in it, but I do technically have that part of my degree. Um, but yeah, I've, I've worked with vocal recordings before. I've done PSAs, commercials and stuff like that for school, like school projects and stuff. So um, yeah, I actually really wanted to go into radio. When I first went to college, I was gonna do radio. That was what I was gonna do. So I was actually gonna focus more on audio production anyway. And then I switched over to editing and then I switched to screenwriting. So now I'm here, um, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Zach, if you have any more questions about audio production, leave them below or uh, I could potentially get to them in a separate video similar to this one in the future. Whew. Alrighty guys, I just answered my last question. So thank you guys so much for sending in questions. It's really fun. Um, it makes me feel like you guys care about me as a person, just apart from my editing and stuff. So I had so much fun doing this. I wanna do more of these Q and A's, maybe when I hit like 15,000 subscribers or 20,000, if I ever make that many or if I hit that many or whatever. 
you know, maybe I can do another one of these. Or if you guys are like, hey, you should do a Q&A sometime soon. I'm in, just let me know. If you guys ever wanna see videos with me on camera, just shoot me a message and be like, hey, get on camera and talk about this subject. And I'll be like, yep, see you then. So it's kind of just that. I'm pretty easygoing. I'm kind of go with the flow. As long as people are interested, I'll keep doing stuff. So I had a ton of fun doing this. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions. If you have more questions that I either didn't get to or didn't answer, you can leave them under this video or you can just pop them over on my community page. I don't really care. I read all the comments anyway, so I try to get to them when I can. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I hope it answered some of your questions. If I didn't answer any of your questions and you were in this video, just shoot them down below. I'll try my best. I'm kind of an idiot sometimes and sometimes I just phase right by them so you know just let me know if I didn't answer them quite the way that you were hoping for or if you have a follow-up question or something like that just leave them down below um so yeah hopefully uh you guys are still enjoying the achievement hunter compilations I don't know when this video is coming out so I don't know what video I'm up to but as of right now I am gonna go start working on the uh age destroying their office and then after that hopefully I'm gonna be working on the Alfredo being a crackhead video that's my next plan after that who knows so I don't know what you guys have seen up to this point, but I do hope that this answered any questions that you guys might have had that you did leave for me. Um, and I hope to talk to you guys sometime soon.